We're here at Aero 2018 in Friedrichshafen, Germany, thanks to Bristol Aircraft USA and to LSA Aero Marine for helping us be here to record videos. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking with Jonathan Porter today. Many Americans know him as Captain Yaw, so I'm going to stick with that handle because no I think problem. it's fun. And we're going to ask Captain Yaw about well, a whole range of engines actually. In fact, there are so many. Why don't you put it in perspective for me? And let's hear about all the engines that UL Power Company produces. Okay, the UL Power range is fascinating. It starts from a 97 horsepower engine all the way to 200 horsepower. And all of the engines have options for aerobatics, reverse rotation, and a variety of other things, which we don't find in other engines. So it's a wide range of engines meeting a wide range of applications. So I don't think I understood, Jonathan, that all the engines have both those qualities of reverse rotation, meaning for tractor or pusher, or aerobatic for those that can do that. Now, that may not be every airplane, so clarify that for me. Absolutely. So you can have the options if they're appropriate for your installation. So obviously not for a helicopter, but yet the whole engine construct, the design from this engine from the blank sheet operation back between 2002 and 2006, when the first engine was designed, all of this was built in, the facility to move to the six cylinder, the short stroke, the long stroke, the high capacity, high compression, low compression, was all built into the design of this engine from day one. So these things that you just described, the sort of either or choices, is that how you get all those different power points? Well, if you look at it on the power, what you've got is you've got four basic engines. You've got the four cylinder engine, which comes in two different displacements, 2.6 litre and 3.5 litre. Okay. And each of those has a high and a low compression option. When we come to the, the six, six cylinder, cylinder here, I guess you can we see again some. we have uh, a smaller displacement and a higher displacement and a low compression and a high compression. So if you took a 390, which is the small displacement, you can have low compression, 140 horsepower or higher compression 160 if you wanted the 180 you go to the higher displacement the 5.2 liter low compression and for 200 the same engine but high compression so we have this incredible range through fantastic engineering design at the outset of the engine now tell me a little bit about where the engines originate from and well, you know I, I've had to learn all this I, I have a slightly different background and I came into using UL Power recently and so I did a lot of digging around and it turns out that in 2001 there was a helicopter that wouldn't fly and they called on a local man who was known to be a brilliant genius at tuning engines to see if they could get this to work. It was an 80 horsepower engine but it didn't give 80 horsepower. Mm. As we know some horses are bigger than others. <laughs> and well put. He, he tuned that engine and found well why don't we come up with a clean sheet design. So in 2002, he started the clean sheet design, his name was Lionel, and he brought in Patrick, who's the man who makes things, he's the engineer. Ah, I see. And so Lionel said, well, let's do this, and Patrick said, well, I've got to make this, so let's do it this way. Then Lionel was, let's have a low compression and a high compression, and Patrick was, I've got to make this, and Lionel was, if we do it this way. And so they iterated backwards and forwards, and then they brought in uh, Joss, who's the, the guru on all the things to do with the ECU, and they, ah, right okay. in those four years, laid the foundation so that in 2006, when the 97 horsepower was launched. That was the first engine. That was the first. Okay. The 260i was launched in 2006. In 2007, they brought out the high compression, 107. By 2008, they had the aerobatic version flying. By 2009, they had brought out the 350 with the larger displacement with the high and low compression. So from 2006, that launch, to 2009, in three years, they had got what they planned. Well, so it's been a process for UL Power to get into this game, right? I'm a pilot. Um, those who know me know I've been flying in pretty hostile conditions. I've got a few thousand hours, um, built a lot of planes, flown with a lot of different things. And for me, the transition to using UL Power was a big deal. I'm asked a lot of questions. You know, I, I've flown 
with like Boeing's Continentals, with every engine you can think of out there. So for me, there were a number of things. I got a friend in the States, Roger, who's been flying one of these for five years. And I rang Roger up and I said, Roger, what do you think of the engine? He said, well, you've flown with it because I've been flying it on trips to the States. He said, you know, it's smooth. I said, yeah, but how reliable is it? And he was, I've had it in here five years. I've done over 500 hours. I've flown lots. I've just done a service on it and it's absolutely sweet. I then rang a friend, Phil, in South Africa, and I said, Phil, I know you've been playing with these engines. And he went, I love them. And I said, Phil, you, you build planes. I said, what's your thing? He said, they start every time. They're easy to install. It's really simple engine, lovely to maintain. So with that information in hand, thinking, well, let's have a look. Patricia and I, we got on the car in the car and we drove out to Belgium to the factory to see how they were made and to understand better. My background includes robotic manufacturing, CNC's. I looked at them. So you know what you're looking at then? Oh, 100%. This is an engine aimed at the, the kit lane builder, aimed at the non-certified market, which is nice because you don't have the add-on cost that everybody pays sure. for doing those things. Listen, I, I'm in the UK where we're very British and we like bits of paper. and. We have all of the test reports, all of the details, we know exactly, and they are tested to the endurance test as required. And when you look at the engine, you go, right, this engine, non-certified, which means that it's been able to adapt quickly to the yes, needs of the users. Which is another thing that comes with that. Yeah. When you don't get tied into all that paperwork, you can go, we can do this better than we were doing it. Let's just do it. And let's be honest, that's why the kit aeroplane market in the USA is so buoyant. Yes. So then you look and you go, the plan on this engine is it's to be easy to install. It's a Fadec engine. You've only got one lever to the cockpit. Uh, I'll pull that there. That's all the control you've got. Just one lever. And that one lever tells the engine what you're doing. Are you accelerating, decelerating? What power do you want? So no chokes, no primers, very simple. So we've got a wet sump engine, which means that we only have short oil lines to the oil radiator and the brackets for it can be supplied directly by the factory. So oh, it's really? a okay. simple installation. That's it, that's your plumbing. Then you've got fuel in, fuel out, because it's a, a, a pressurized system for the injection. If we look on from that, what else makes this engine simple? It's a direct drive engine. Ah, yes. It's not just direct drive, but it actually has a replaceable propeller flange. The prop flange is on a spline ah, onto the crankshaft. That's not so common either. I think it's unique. I've not seen it anywhere else. And what it means is, if we've got a customer who wants a prop spacer, they don't need one, we can change the prop flange. Ah. If they want to use a new propeller with a different uh, bolt hole pattern, we can produce a new one for them. So that flexibility you don't get if you put the prop flange on the crankshaft. Yes, right. So that's the thought. The oil pump is at the front. And the oil pumps push the entire volume of the oil through the engine every six seconds at 3,000 RPM. Which means you've got not just oil pressure, you've got oil flow, oil volume. The cylinder heads themselves are not just air-cooled, but oil-cooled. We have pressurized uh, yeah. oil coming up here and squirted in there. So we've got our baffles come on here, we've got air coming through and down, we've got oil coming up here. We have overcome the big challenge of an air-cooled engine by adding the oil being thrown in here. Then I go, ah, but what about oil jetting? And they go, oh, oil jetting for pistons, ah, oh, that's complicated, it adds more complexity. We change the way we make our conrods. And the conrod is shaped to be able to throw oil up ah, really? onto the, the piston connecting rods you're that's talking right, about. Yeah, yeah. Piston conrod will throw oil up to the underside of the piston. So it's oil splashing to aid in that cooling. And so we've got a system here which is so simple, and simple of course makes it more reliable. Absolutely. If we then look on and we look at the uh, ignition systems, the coils are mounted off the engine so they're not getting hot. So ah, they'll okay, last long. Okay. Yeah, this, you've got to mount it on what would be the engine firewall. Yeah, they sometimes go on the firewall. Some installations put them on the mount. But the thing but is, not on the engine is they're the not key point, on the engine. Right. So they're not subject to the vibration. They're not subject to the heat. Another feature which I think is fantastic. 
The ECU is compact and the ECU uses high quality metal fittings which means they will last. 500 make break connections possible on the ECU. Wow. So, you know, if you're building a plane and you're making and breaking connections, you know, if you've only got a small number, like on many automotive type things, you can only make, say, 20 connections. Here you've got a military type system where you can do 500 wow. make break connections. Wow. Um, very high quality unit. Very, very impressed by the ECU. So, all that translates to a very expensive engine? It relates to an engine which, if you look at the price per horsepower, actually is incredibly competitive against other injected engines. And if you look at the fuel rail, this is on the six cylinder, the fuel rail is incredibly compact. And that means that it's easy to maintain and to work on. In fact, the whole system is so easy to maintain that the company has just released a PDF document called the Maintenance Guide where you can click in and you can click through a picture guide to do the maintenance on your engine. Is that like, right? It's like an engineer in your pocket. So in the repair manuals, you just talked about a PDF document where you can explode yeah. all the parts of the engine. What you've got is that PDF document isn't just a normal PDF. It's a fully linked clickable document yeah, I'll where for you, you hold that, that there. Okay. Let's say that you're sitting at work and you're thinking, I need to do maintenance on my plane. You pull your engineer out your pocket, you can pull up your maintenance schedule. The engineer and, in your pocket, I like that. It is sized to be able to be read on your mobile phone. And it's fully clickable, so there are links you can click through, you can go back, and then you go, well, I'm going to do some work on it. What am I going to do? Yeah. I'm going to check the torque of my cylinder head. So it comes in, you've got the description, and then you've got exactly what to do, the settings to do, the tools required. Really is the engineer in yeah, your pocket. Yeah, very nice uh, a pictorial uh, depiction as well, so that you can see exactly what you're doing. But these engines use solid lifters, which means that people also would like to sometimes see how to check the gaps. So there ah, is a yeah, full yeah. Okay. guide in there explaining why we do it, the advantages of a solid lifter, and as you can see you can also zoom into the pages as well, and you can go through then and you can either flick it like a book or you can lose, use the links to read what to do, how to do it, Very nice. and even show you which direction to turn the spanners when you're working. Beautiful. Which for me means that when I'm working out on the field, I've got what I need. I can do the maintenance. Right. It's a Sunday You don't afternoon. have to go inside and look at a book in a shop that's yeah. all the way over there from where the engine is. Or having to call somebody at half past five on a Sunday evening. Yeah, right. Where you're going to get support from the engineer in your pocket. And that's the maintenance and a troubleshooting guide. Beautiful. And there's going to be an installation guide coming out soon as well. That's nicely done. Okay, let's uh, summarize up a little bit here. Uh, let's talk about TBO on the engine. Okay. Um, the TBO is 1500 hours. Okay. And it's a fixed price overhaul. So when you are sending your engine in, depending on which cylinder count and compression type you are, you are given a fixed price. You send your engine away and it comes back zero timed. There's no surprise charges. And that again I think is a really nice thing about cost effective Yes, ownership. I think people would like to hear that. That's great. And it is an overhaulable engine. It's, no, it's an engine which is solid. It's a really robust engine. It is fully overhaulable. It's not one where you're going to go, Ugh. is it cost effective to overhaul or not? I see, okay. You, know, it, it not, you, okay. Can, you know you'll be able to overhaul it and you know that that price is going to be what it is. One question that a lot of people will ask, Jonathan, would be relative to um, ASTM approval. Now, this has become part of the language for those people that are operating light sport mm -hmm. aircraft. What is the UL Power approach to meeting ASTM standards? I can tell you now that the company is working towards ASTM, and I've, there's a new production facility going in which will move it much closer to that, and that's going to be coming online, I understand, next year. And I think that the Every day is a day further towards it, and I think that at some point in the future you're going to hear ASTM being bandied about, but I also think that at the moment the market is big enough for non-ASTM versions to be selling very well indeed. Oh, absolutely. So it's primarily today, it's the what we call the kit market in America, the home built or or mm -hmm. scratch built for those that are still doing that and yep. they can choose any engine they want Absolutely. require no certification they're still as concerned as we talked about in the beginning about a good engine so yes. you've given us a lot of great information 
And you know what? No matter how many good questions I may have asked, I'm sure I left out some that somebody would wish that I asked you. So how can we direct them to find you on the web uh, at the factory and in the USA? Okay, so if you're looking at the factory website where all of the downloadable manuals are, that's ulpower.com. Okay, ulpower.com. If, if you're looking for some technical articles or you want some real life stories of people who've used the engines, you go to ulpower.news. That news, okay. If you want to contact the American dealer, you go to ulpower.net. Okay, very simple there. All UL Power and various endings, uh, domain names, uh, will get you to all the information in the world, including maybe Captain Yaw if you're lucky. So we were lucky enough here to do this. Um, and I know that we'll have more talking about UL Power as time goes on because their engines are well received in the U.S. and all around the world. You can find more about all of those aircraft and many of the installations of these engines and other videos and all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks again to Bristol Aircraft USA and LSA Aero Marine for their help today. And thank you for talking with Jonathan Porter and myself here at Aero 2018.